Hey there, my name is Megan and today I'm going to show you how I transformed one of our spare bedrooms into a beautiful and bright playroom slash homeschool room. Now first let me show you what the room looked like before. This was my son's bedroom and as you can see the floors are the original finish. They are very dark orangey red finish and the first thing I wanted to do was clear everything out and refinish them. If you've been following me for a while, then you'll know that I have been refinishing the floors myself in our home, working from room to room, and I'm not gonna be sharing that information here on YouTube, but I do have a highlight dedicated to it on my Instagram. I am at Megan Bell Made. So as you can see, I did a satin finish on them. They're gorgeous. The room itself is quite large. It's basically a square. It has three windows. It gets lots of sunlight, still plenty of wall space, so I have options for things to do on the walls, and of course it has a closet which I will probably use for my toy rotation. And then eventually when we start taking homeschooling more seriously, I'll store all of my homeschool supplies in here. There is a radiator in here. Of course, there's radiator in every room in our house. Keep us warm. And then as you can see, there's gaps in between the baseboards and the flooring where I do need to still install some molding. And I'll probably get some haters for this, but I'm gonna take that ugly ceiling fan down. I'm not a fan of ceiling fans. I never think they look good. And we don't really use them in our house. So that one is gonna come down. First thing I'm gonna do is cut my stop molding for that little gap in the floor. Now I don't like to use quarter round anymore because once I found stop molding and realized that it is more historically correct, it's all I really think looks good there against those baseboards. And as you can see, it's slimmer and it has that really nice detail in it. It looks really good up against the baseboards. I like to use spackling to fill my nail holes. I like it because I can just wipe it on with my finger and be done. I don't have to go back and fuss with it later. And then I'm painting all my trim in this room with Benjamin Moore's Advance. I love this stuff on trim and I have it for this room in the color White Dove and I'm using it in a satin finish. And no, I don't tape when I paint. I like the challenge of precision and I think it takes longer to tape and then paint. It's just easier to do it this way for me. The next thing I want to do is paint this radiator. It is old, it's got stains on it, it's damaged, it's dirty. And once it's the color of everything else in the room, it's going to kind of help blend into the room, which is really what I want. What I like to use on my radiators is an oil-based primer. Once that's dried and cured, I go over it with an interior latex paint. And I'm using Benjamin Moore's Regal in a satin finish. And the color is White Dove, which is the same as the walls and the trim in here. And it's going to make the radiator blend into the walls really nicely. Now that I've got all that work done, I can do the fun part. I'm going to make a mood board for the room. So I've got the color of my walls, similar flooring. These curtains were already in the room and I want to reuse them. I found this gorgeous rifle paper Loloi rug on Facebook Marketplace, brand new. I love this ticking stripe yellow wallpaper and I want to try to incorporate that somewhere in the room and I definitely want some storage for toys that I can paint this gorgeous light blue color that's also in the rug and then just some fun artwork to go on the walls with nice pops of red and just cheerful colors. When it comes to the toy storage, I know I'm going to use the Ivar cabinets from Ikea. I've used them before. They're super easy to put together. They come unfinished. so They can be painted, stained, really whatever you want to do with them, you can. They're so easy to install. So that was a no-brainer for me. And once I got them put together, I lined them up on this wall and knew this is exactly where I wanted to have them. And I turned to Pinterest for a little inspiration. And I found this account from a woman named Anna, and I just love what she did with her Ivar cabinets. Painting the walls behind the cabinets the same color as the cabinets is a design aspect I really want to use in here. And I have an idea that I think will make it my own. I got my paint samples from Benjamin Moore, but I do have them mix fair and balls color. So I got three choices for blue, two choices for a red to go on the inside of the cabinets, and two choices for yellow, which I want to make my own ticking stripe wallpaper <laughs> by hand using the yellow paint. I could not wait to roll this rug out. Like I said earlier, I did find it on Facebook Marketplace. It was brand new and I only paid $300 for it, but it is worth every penny at retail price because the colors are gorgeous in person and the cloud pile material is so incredibly soft. I wish every rug in my house felt like this. It is such a gorgeous rug in person. 
And I was excited to lay my paint samples out against this rug so I could truly pick the right colors that were gonna complement it. I'm looking for a blue to go on the outside of the cabinets, a pop of red on the inside, and a yellow for my painted wallpaper. And what I ended up with was Lulworth blue for the cabinets, Charlotte's locks on the inside, and I was between two yellows, but I ended up going with the deeper one, which was Sudbury yellow. I mounted these Ivar cabinets just above my baseboards and then I made sure to prime them because if you don't prime them, you will see the knots on the wood show through. Since the Ivar cabinet is part of Ikea's Ivar system, the cabinets actually come with a little hole on the tops of them and I just filled them with caulk to hide them. Now that all the shelves and the doors are also primed, I'm going to paint the inside of my cabinet. And I am so excited about this part because this is such a bold color choice for me. This is way out of my usual comfort level, but I think it is so fun. And this has really inspired me to want to incorporate even more color throughout my home because this is the children's playroom. So it feels like a safe place to add color, but I really want to add even more throughout the house. And now it's time to paint the outside of the cabinets with this really beautiful blue. This is Lulworth Blue from Farrow and Ball. I do get all of my Farrow and Ball colors mixed at Benjamin Moore. I'm using the Advanced Paint in Satin Finish. This is the same stuff I used on my trim, and I really like it for cabinets as well because it really hardens down. It makes it really hard to scratch. Using my inspo pictures for these Ivar cabinets, I decided to use some painter's tape and create sort of a color block above the cabinet so it would look like the cabinets extended higher up. And I'm actually using my sample paint to paint this because Benjamin Moore samples come in an eggshell finish. It's perfect for something like this. It was a real money saver. Now you would not want to paint furniture or like a whole wall or anything with this paint, but for something really small like this, it's perfect. I mentioned earlier I wanted to make my own ticking stripe wallpaper and I did a little swatch of it on this sheet of paper here and I think it would look perfect right above the cabinets so I ordered some painters tape in smaller sizes I have a quarter inch one and a half inch one and I'm not going to lie I totally underestimated the size of this project I thought oh this is a small section this won't take me very long and it took me a couple days a few hours each day of taping. Um, I do find it very rewarding and I like doing tedious tasks like this, but I guess I just didn't realize how long it would take me. I think if I had to do it over, I would just order some wallpaper next time, but I was a little hesitant because I've never worked with wallpaper before. And also I didn't want to spend a lot of money on this room. I was trying to keep it on a budget. And I'm using this trick that really works anytime you're painting and using painter's tape is you take the same paint that's already on the wall and paint it on first. So once that dried, I used the sample paint that I had of the yellow. This is the Sudbury yellow from Farrow and Ball. And I painted it all and then pulled all of my tape. Now it would have come off a lot easier had I put a strip down at the bottom of thick painter's tape before, but I didn't think of it. And so this took me a really long time to pull the tape. But the next morning in the light of day, I fell in love with this. It has a few little flaws, 
and it definitely looks hand painted. It's not perfect. But after some time, I realized that this is actually what makes it really special. Next up is to replace the ceiling fan. So once I got it down, I put up this Ikea light that I found. It is so whimsical. It reminds me of like a big moon or something. I just love it. I really wanted some nice French return curtain rods and I found some on Amazon that are really easy to install actually. And I'm pairing it with these earth in hand curtains that I already had from the room. I love shopping my own house. You don't always have to replace every single thing in a room makeover. So in this corner of the room, I wanted to create a little play area for my daughter, for her play kitchen and her dollhouse. We already owned the Ikea Ductic play kitchen, which I previously modified a little bit to make it our own. I purchased this hearth and hand play fridge, and then I'm installing these Ikea shelves that I also already owned. I absolutely love these shelves. I don't know why they discontinued them. I find them so unique. And I figured we could use them as an extension of our toy storage to display some of our nicer toys. Underneath the shelves, I placed my daughter's dollhouse. I purchased this on Facebook Marketplace earlier this year. It was not finished, it's a dollhouse kit. And um, I got a good deal on it and I actually built a platform for it and added casters off camera so that we could turn it around and play with it. And I have some Mayleg mice living here in this dollhouse with some Mayleg furniture. If you don't know Mayleg, it has sort of a cult following and I am its newest member because I love Mayleg. When you're done playing, you can just turn it around and see the beautiful front. I also decided to put our Yodo up here, which has seen better days. We probably need a new Yodo, but if you don't know what a Yodo is, it is a really amazing screen-free device for your children where they can listen to books, listen to music. I'm not really sure how we would have survived without one so far. We absolutely love our Yodo and use it daily. This is just an Amazon playhouse that we've had for ages that my kids still love playing in. I added some gather mats inside just because it needed a little bit of padding. And then on this wall, I wanted to create a cozy sort of little reading nook slash play area because we do have the nugget, which could be so many things. Off camera, I painted these Ikea picture ledges, which double so well as book displays because they're super deep. There's lots of room to display your books and sort of lean them without fear of them falling. I added this blanket ladder with this gorgeous vintage quilt that I've had for a while. It had all the colors in it. And then I just draped uh, a cozy blanket and added some pillows so that I would have a really inviting space for my children to hopefully curl up with a book during the day. For the toy storage, I ordered these collapsible organizers from Hay, and I love them. They come in the most delightful colors. So that's mostly what you're seeing in here, along with lots of Love Every toys because we have so many of them. And I didn't want to overfill these because Christmas is right around the corner. In fact, I filled a bin of things that we'll actually be getting rid of. closet 
a little costume storage. My son loves to dress up. I have our little riding donkey and horse, and of course just adding more wall decor. I did make this little stand for our lewd guitar. I think it looks so cute there. Of course we have to have a stroller for the babies. The last element this room needed was some tables for the kids to work at, especially if this is going to be a homeschool room in the future. I love these Trofast tables from Ikea. I know a lot of stuff from this room is from Ikea. I did get these chairs off Amazon and they are so adorable. But the Trofast is so amazing because it has all this storage. So on this side, I plan to store some art supplies. It's empty right now, but this side has Legos for my son and they just make such a great little workspace for them. It was so rewarding creating this bright and cheerful space for my children. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.